Hi and welcome to this eighth video on SumPy, where we are going to go through integrals. As always, this is part of a series, so if you have not seen the previous video, then just click up in the right corner here, and we have collected all the SumPy videos in a playlist for you to discover. So the function we are going to explore in this video is going to be the integrate function, and as always, we have imported the SumPy package as sp, and we have defined some variables x, y, and z, and we are keeping it real for this video. And additionally, we have a symbol c here, which are just going to be an arbitrary constant in the next calculations. So let me run this cell and continue to the indefinite integrals. So before we start with an integral, we need to define a function. So let us do that with defining the function f to be the cosine function of 2 times x times the sine function and then 3 times x. And let me also return the function f. And here we have a function and what we are wondering about is what is the integral of this function. To figure this out, we will use the integrate function and just apply it to the function f. And here we have the integral of this function. And if we actually want to check that it is indeed the integral, we can use the diff function to differentiate it. And we end up with the original function. So let me remove the derivative and run it again. One thing you should note is that usually when we do indefinite integrals, we would have this constant c here as an arbitrary constant appearing in the integration. But some pi do not want to define some symbol c that it adds to the integral. So to do this, we need to define it ourselves, which we already have done. And I can add this uppercase c here. And here would be the standard indefinite integrals. But usually when I'm doing integration, I will forget this c to the annoyance of my calculus students. So let's not bother with it here as well. But you can add it if you want to. You just need to define a different symbol. Later, we are going to do multivariable integrals. And in the case that the function depends on several different symbols, you will need to emphasize which variable you are integrating in. And to do this, it's very similar to differentiation, where you just, after the comma, you write down the variable you are integrating in. And if we run it, we end up with the same answer. Okay, so that was the first example of indefinite integrals. So let me define another function depending on two variables, x and y. And let me also return the function g. And now what I can do is to integrate the function g, again with the integrate function. And in this case, if I try to not specify the variable, I will end up with an error because we have two symbols. So I will need to specify the variable I'm integrating in which is going to be x. And let me also return the answer. And here we see that when y is not equal to minus one, we end up with one form. And otherwise, or when y is equal to minus one, we end up with the integral being the logarithm of x. And this is also true when we think back to our calculus classes. But this form here is what we call a piecewise defined function. And to get the type, we can write type h. And what it tells us is that the type of h is a piecewise defined function. So functions defined piecewise will act as any other functions. For instance, what you can do is to multiply with another function. So for instance, we can take this h here and multiply by f. And it will write it in this weird form here. But if we take some parentheses around it, and let me take it a bit up and simplify it, 
you will see that each of the entries in the piecewise defined function are just multiplied by the function f. Next, I want to talk a bit about definite integrals. So again, I will consider the function sine 3x times cosine 2x. And definite integrals have two limits, where we integrate from and where we integrate to. So if we want to do a definite integral, we can write sp.integrate, then the function f, and then we need to specify the variable inside parentheses, where we begin integrating from and where we end the integration. So here we integrate from zero to pi. So let me run this cell and we end up with the answer being six divided by five. So let's do a second example where we consider improper integrals. So improper integrals are integrals where one of the limits are, for instance, infinity or somewhere where the functions head up to infinity. So in this le case, let me define a function u and let me just define it to be minus x. And let me also return the function. So here is the function u. And let's try to integrate this function u from zero to infinity. And the way to do this is first of all, we take the function u in. Thereafter, we take the tuple with first the variable, then the low limit, which is zero, and then the upper limit, which is going to be infinite, which is sp.oo. So this thing here is just a SumPy notation for infinity. So let me run this all. And here we end up with interval being one. So you're free to check that this is the correct answer by actually doing the integration. Okay, so, so far we have only considered integrating in one variable, but some pi can handle multiple integration in several variables. So let us define a function in three variables, which I'm going to call w and it's going to be equal to x times y times set squared. And let me also give back the function w. So what I want to do now is to take this function here and integrate it once in x and once in the y variable. So the way to do this is very similar to the way to do differentiation. You just write sp.integrate and then your function, which is going to be w, and then the first variable of integration, which is x, and then the second variable of integration, which is y. And if I run this, I end up with x squared times y squared times z squared divided by four. And the reason is that if you integrate x, then you end up with x squared divided by two in y times the integral in y, which is y squared divided by two. And finally, by multiplying by z squared, you end up with this as an answer. If you want to do definite integrals, you need to additionally to the variables, you need to plug in the limits. So what you do then is again, integrate function and then the function w, and then you need the tuple containing x and the lower and upper limit. So let me write x comma zero and one as the upper limit. And let us take the second variable, which is y, one as the lower limit this time, and for instance, five as the upper limit. And finally, the last integral, which is going to be in set from zero to three. So if we take and compute this integral, what we end up with is the answer 54. So of course you can do the integration by hand by first integrating in X and then in Y and then in Z, but here you can also get some pi to do the entire integration for you. Okay, this was everything I had to say about integration in SumPy. In the next video, Eirik is going to discuss limits and sums with you. So stay tuned to the next video in the next week.